Chris Dubois to Buffalo, New York for an inside look at ultimate fighting. We caution you, some of the pictures you're about to see are very graphic. <laughs> This is no boxing match. It's not wrestling. Not martial arts. It's bare knuckles, often bloody brawling. The ultimate fighting championship. The real thing, promoters say, a road show coming to an arena and a TV set near you. That's why it's all blood. How are you here, man? See blood. Blood. You know, a couple deaths. The fight's over when a fighter surrenders. The only rules are no eye gouging and no biting. Everything else is fair game. Everything. The fighters are locked into an octagon-shaped chain-link fence ring, borrowed from the movie Conan the Barbarian. They've got nicknames like Fang, Tank, and Giant Killer, suburban Chicago's Keith Hackney, the one who put the punctuation into this punch. Well, that's a that's vital target. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. UFC has become one of pay-per-view's fastest-growing events. The most recent fight in Buffalo, New York, drawing 300,000 viewers from around the world at 19.95 apiece. That's up from 80,000 watching the first fight two years ago. And as popularity picks up, actors, athletes, and other celebrities are joining the bandwagon as analysts and fans. I grew up with five brothers, and we, we seem to do this all the time. I watch it on TV all the time. My brothers do, so it's something. It's entertainment. All that blood and all that violence, the stuff that really sells the spectacle, the stuff that puts the fans in the seats and keeps promoters happy. That's the stuff that has critics angry. They say ultimate fighting needs to be ultimately banned. We would prevent such matches between animals. I'm not sure why you can argue that we would allow such things between human beings. Is this human cockfighting? Oh, exactly. Exactly. Or pit bulls. Arizona Senator McCain has worked to get four states to ban ultimate fighting. We don't allow people to jump off the, the, the Golden Gate Bridge. We don't allow people to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. We expect certain standards of behavior in our society, and this is clearly uh, in gross violation of that indeed. Do you know which sport has the most deaths of all horse racing it's a rich man's sport there's not a lot of complaining promoter bob myrowitz claims his show is safer than boxing you have to really have technique you have to have ability and you have to know what you're doing when you step into the octagon i'd love to see some boxers step in there without gloves on and see what he could do so you're number one you ready to take on tyson he's a great boxer i would love to fight him so you could beat him on technique Yes, but standing up, he'd kill me. <laughs> For fighters like Keith Hackney, this is true sport. A heating and air conditioning repair shop owner by day, he keeps up a punishing training regimen. A lot of people don't understand what's going on there. They think it's just a... Understand, uh, two guys beating the heck out of each other. They're trying to, you know, beat, fight to the death. I mean, what, how, what does it understand? How I look at it is, I'm in there to test myself, see where I'm at in my training, and uh, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. And as long as the opponents that are in there are skilled, nobody is going to get hurt. But what this display of athleticism, brutality, and aggression says about us collectively is a matter of perspective. This is real fighting. I mean, it is no more so or worse or better than most any other sport that we all watch. It is repugnant, it's repulsive, and it's unacceptable in our society. Let it go, the people like it. That's what it's all about, right? At the end of the competition, the fighter still standing walks away with $50,000. Sometimes it's probably just enough to cover the medical bills. The next televised ultimate fight is next month. Still ahead.